trust your gut and follow the deer. Stay on the fourth, but don't pass the fifth. The drunk woods will always belong to the best. Hey guys, just want to give a quick word to the sponsor of this video, Sweet Tooth Eddie. He hit me up on Twitter to do a review on my YouTube channel for Junk Woods. I just want to say that though this is a sponsored video, my feelings and anything I said in this video, I stand behind. I mean, hell, even I backed them on Kickstarter. He stands behind his project and it's really creative. Check out the website. I'll have it on screen here. All well done stuff. Check them out. And lastly, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm close to 1,000 subs and you can help me get there faster by clicking that sub button. All right, enjoy. Peace. The junk wood starts the very same way this video started, with Wendy's song, Creepy. We cut to our group as they're running away from some Made in Abyss Jumanji fusion mosquitoes, and by the way, this is our main character, Valentino. The promise of horror and intense situations is stamped out very strongly in the beginning as Martin, a rando in the group, trips while being sworn by the bugs. And he is also our first casualty. Millie, who is a scrapper with experience, is even shocked at the sight of Martin's final moments. The junk woods is a mystery after all. Valentino's tweaking a bit and out of breath, but doing better than Martin. And the unconscious woman on his shoulders is, well, still not awake. Jiho, another member, who's pretty badly wounded, but still able to move forward. As they're talking, Valentino gets startled and pulls a knife on a deer. The deer seemingly smells something and walks away. This is when Valentino notices the smell and starts to lose consciousness. The sweet rot plant is the cause for this as it looks to use its veins to essentially suck nutrients out of its unconscious prey. As Valentino fades, so does the page, from white to black. I love how the creator uses the medium in this chapter. Page color, paneling is super dope and well done. Honestly, the art and presentation is just overall great. Back to the chapter, we get a flashback of Valentino breaking down bad doing drugs. You get it? Breaking bad, but it's breaking down bad? Uh, you get it, you get it. Someone stops him and it's Enzo, his best friend apparently, but he warns Valentino about his position getting cut due to the colony struggling with a disease outbreak. Marigold's this organization that seems to run the colony and I don't trust them already, but Valentino needs his job for the benefits to take care of some girl, maybe his mom, sister, girlfriend, we're not sure yet. Anyways, Enzo pulls some strings for our main character to save his job the same way Enzo saved his, and that's by going to the junk woods. We also get Millie's introduction here, which it seems all of them are childhood besties. We get a creepy page of three people yelling at Valentino next, and they all have vertical slits on their eyes. As they get closer to Valentino, they call him a deadhead and blame him for something, saying it's his fault. As they're about to bite down on Valentino, we see his eyes also have lines in them. He is startled by this image of himself, but it's almost as if he lost his own personal self-image. Now they're all waking up, but another deer pops up, but this one's encased in a shadow. It lurks above a shelf, Millie swings, hits its head off, but no resistance. Meaning it was just a mask, and there's now a little girl staring at Valentino, and her partner takes care of Jiho and Millie by knocking the shelf on top of them. And this is where we meet Wendy and Jaybird. Yes, Wendy, the girl singing in the beginning. The two groups go back and forth arguing over a deal that they're trying to make. Jaybird wants all of their supplies in order to get them to 44th Street. Millie turns it down because the colony can't risk losing that kind of supply loss. Jaybird says it's all or none and he asks if they know what myths are. This is where we meet the sniffer, which is a myth of the junk woods. It looks to have some kind of mechanical additions added to it, so it's not just a normal animal. I don't know if it's made like that by somebody, Marigold maybe, or if the junk woods just produces monsters of this type that are like technologically advanced in a sense, or mechanically advanced. Valentino ultimately takes the deal with Jaybird. This is where he sends Wendy off to go deal with the sniffer. Now Wendy has this little contraption on her waist as she runs and she hits it. The paneling seemingly makes it look like the sniffer's picking up on the scent. I'm wondering if Jaybird and Wendy were actually a little sus and they lured the sniffer to them in order to make the deal. And I'm thinking that they also killed that first deer which was the deer Wendy had on her head because it was still dripping blood like it was fresh. But their plan to take out the sniffer is to 
basically wrap it up in some wire, get it caught up. As it's chasing Wendy, Valentino throws up, which catches the lurker's attention and is chasing him. Trying to damage the sniffer, Jiho ends up getting bit on its way to Valentino. Valentino comes up with the idea to trip it up in the vines that the sweet rot grew by his body when he woke up, and it works. And Jaybird seemingly was impressed or liked his uh, strategy there. We see Jaybird in action as he hits the sniffer on the head with a blunt object, a bat. Millie tried to damage it early on in the chapter, but couldn't get through it with her axe. Now that the sniffer's concussed, it looks as if he takes the axe and then hammers it into the top of the head of the sniffer with the bat. He gets kicked off and damaged by the sniffer. As it's chasing towards Jaybird, Wendy picks up the rope that was attached to the axe. We get to see Wendy's crazy strength as she pulls it out of the sniffer as it's running away, ultimately killing the sniffer. As the group is coming back together, Jaybird asks Valentina where were they really running from? because he knows it wasn't the sniffer. And that's what makes me think he lured the sniffer to them with that little contraption on Wendy, basically finessing. Millie's going back to pick up Jiho's shovel because weapons, you know, they're a hot commodity in junk woods. As she runs back, we see a black bird going off. This is what startles Jaybird and Wendy. Stunned as like how they found it, they, they got away from it, they escaped, why is it still chasing them? I liked what the creator did here as well because we get these notes from Valentino's book and he draws this freaky looking thing. He says he was right. We weren't running from the sniffer. They were running from that. And then we cut to an all black page that just says, where's my daughter? And it's this creepy looking thing that looks like it took a bite out of Millie's neck. Mind you, Jay Bird was just telling Wendy to run. Her specifically to run and get away. Her unique strength is questionable. Where did she come from? Is that thing really her mother or is it just like this territorial beast that just like takes a liking to kids or whatever? We won't know, but we have to get a chapter two. I highly recommend you check this series out. I really enjoyed it. Like I know this is a sponsored video and all that, but I think it's truly an interesting series. The cliffhanger at the end, the art, the presentation. I think the character designs really well. I wasn't really big on the monsters in the junk woods at first, like the sniffer and the, the sweet rot, the mosquitoes, but seeing the true threat at the very end, it played up into this nice buildup. Highly recommend you check it out. All the links will be in the description. You know, even I backed them on Kickstarter because that's how much I have faith in this project. The creator, Sweet Tooth Eddie, is a really straightforward guy. He stands behind his work. I could tell he has experience in the business, and I like how personable he was. He didn't ask me to speak nicely or hype it up. He truly just asked me to read it like I normally would and review it. And y'all know me, my big thing is I want authenticity. I want you to watch my videos and believe what I'm saying. I don't want to sell something that, you know, I don't even believe in. I've already turned down a couple sponsors to be honest with you guys. This is my first one for a reason, it's because I believe in it. I appreciate you guys. Junk Woods, can't wait to read chapter two. And until next time, stay normie, stay weeb. Shit even in between is fine. Until next time, peace.